and it's just maddening to be constantly burning alive. It's basically hell on earth. 25-year-old Samara Rose in Graphia suffers from two rare conditions at the same time, erythromyalgia and Raynaud's syndrome, causing her intense pain if her temperature either rises or falls. Her father Brian also suffers from both conditions, and so far they have found no cure. Between the two of us, we've tried every treatment that's been used for erythromyalgia, but we have found absolutely nothing that helps, nothing that lessens the flare-ups, and absolutely nothing that can help lessen the pain. Virtually housebound and unable to work, Samara has to find enjoyment where she can. I can fly. <laughs> I basically have an obsession with silly hats. <laughs> They bring me a lot of joy. It's pretty amazing that she can be as cheerful and fun-loving as she is in the midst of all of her pain. <laughs> Urethromyalgia causes burning pain, quite similar to a first or second degree burn, but constant and forever. It's a dysfunction of the thermoregulatory system. Whenever there's a slight increase in warmth, the body radically overreacts, floods blood to the skin. The blood then gets stuck in the skin instead of being circulated. That causes deoxygenation and leads to horrific nerve pain. And I also have Raynaud's syndrome, which makes everything even way more complicated because I'm always too hot and too cold at the same time. Whenever uh, someone with Raynaud's is exposed to cooler temperatures, the blood withdraws from the skin, causing a sort of numb kind of burning pain. And it was incredibly difficult for us to get a diagnosis for Samar Rose. We went to well over a hundred doctors. No one seemed to understand what it was. Even the most basic tasks are a struggle for Samara and Brian, as they need to maintain an ambient temperature of around 62 degrees Fahrenheit or 17 degrees Celsius. When I get into temperatures above 62, 63 degrees, especially if I do any sort of movement, it feels like I'm in an oven. My hands will flare up, my ears can flare up, my feet can flare up, my face. But the worst of it is just this general sense of being overwhelmed by heat. Knowing that my daughter has to go through the pain that I have, and in her case, even worse pain, is definitely the, the worst part of our situation. Samara developed the conditions age nine and had to be homeschooled, leaving her isolated from her friends. It's really hard to remember what my life was like when I was a kid before this started. I used to be outside all the time. I was born with black hair and then I was in the sun so much I had basically blonde hair. I have definitely missed out on life a lot. It's so hard to imagine what normal life is like. It's been so long. Samara barely sleeps and has two fans pointed at her at all times. When she can leave the house, she often has to use a wheelchair. We get like very dirty looks at like grocery shops. Like yes, we can walk, but not very far. Our feet get insanely swollen and burning and it's just very difficult. It's hard because I don't have an invisible disease, but sometimes like when I would go out, I would put foundation on to cover up all the redness on my face because I don't want people to look at me and only see pain. But at the same time, it makes it so they are less understanding because they can't see it. Samara's mother, Ariella, works in California to support the family, but spends 10 days a month in Michigan looking after Samara and her father. She can groom herself and feed herself, but when I'm home, I have to do the grocery shopping for the whole month and I try to cook a lot of things. All of her food has to be microwaved because she can't use a stove or an oven. I try to do all of her shopping and cleaning, do her laundry. If you can imagine taking clothes out of a dryer, they're hot, you know, she would have to wait and then they'd be all wrinkled, so I have to do everything for her. The family are desperate to find a cure, but so far 
they've been unsuccessful. I did get my hopes up when we were looking into stem cell therapy, but it is insanely expensive. 60000 for stem cell therapy, and it's certainly no guarantee. It seems the most promising, but who can do that? Who has money for that? It really, really helps if you're rich when you're sick. It really helps. I guess I'm probably the only one in the family that's hopeful about it, but I have to be hopeful. I wouldn't want to believe that there's no hope for her being cured or going into remission. I wouldn't want to believe that.